All right, welcome Calculorians. In this video, we are going to look at ways to find the derivative of a function at any point quickly and using algebra tricks. And some of the tricks we proved graphically, some of them we proved um, using the, the limit of the, the slope of the secant to the slope of the tangent. Um, you saw that you can multiply by a conjugate when you're dealing with radicals. There's a lot of algebra behind it, and we're not going to spend a lot of time with that. So we're going to just practice recognizing shortcuts and applying them. So let's start with, I've got a few examples here to go over. So this is the algebra uh, behind the calculus, or the algebra shortcuts. So g of x is 1400 over x to the ninth. And surprisingly to no one, I can rewrite that as negative 1400 x to the negative 9. Now don't be shocked, this is something you want to get used to, and you can do it, okay? So to take the derivative now, that negative 9 is just going to come down, I'm going to do negative 9 times 1400 x to the negative 10. And I'm going to grab my calculator here, I don't want to do 1400 times 9, so g prime of x is negative 12,000, oops, 600 x to the negative 10, which I can clean this up if I don't feel like leaving negative exponents, negative 12,600 all over x to the 10th power. Ooh. So not bad, right? You can do this. This is just some basic algebra. Um, one thing I wanna stress, when we had this coefficient here, when we have a scalar something times a, a function, the 1400 kind of just stuck along throughout the whole process, right? We rewrote our x, our x term to the negative power and that 1400 just got multiplied by that negative nine. So I'm pointing it out because now I've got 253 times the square root of x. Which is not a big deal if we rewrite it as, oops, not h prime of x, what am I doing? h of x as 253 x to the 1 half. Now let's apply our shortcut. h prime of x is the 253 times the half x to the 1 half minus 1. h prime of x, 253 over 2 x to the negative 1 half. And if I clean up and have no negative exponents, 253. The 2 is going to, or the x is going to join, the, the square root of x is going to join that 2 in the denominator. Boom. Given that h of x is 253 square root of x, the derivative is 253 over 2 times the square root of x. Ooh. I know, it's really some fascinating, fascinating stuff. So let's keep going. All right, f of x is 6 cosine of x. Now here, I want to bring in that idea again, no big deal when we have a coefficient, we're just going to take the derivative of the function. If it has a scalar or coefficient, that coefficient is just going to come with us. So what I mean by that, like let's say um, a of x is cosine x, well based on that geometric or graphical proof, we said that if cosine x is our function, then the derivative is negative sine x. So this time I've got a six here, and just like in the g of x function, when the 1400 just came along for the ride, the six is there, it's gonna come along for the ride. So just think about that for a sec. Six is just gonna come along for the ride, so I get negative six sine x. Boom, awesome. So let's keep on trucking. Let's deal with these radical functions. Okay, now, on a previous episode, we proved, so actually, um, we, for p of x, I rewrote p of x as x to the 1 half, and we've seen this. The derivative then is 1 half x to the 1 half minus 1, which is 1 half x to the negative 1 half, which is, I'm running out of space for my hand to write, equals 1 over 2 square root of x. So given p of x is the square root of x, the derivative is 1 over 2 times the square root of x. Then in the video that we did recently, we saw that g of x is the square root of 13x. The derivative is 
13 all over 2 times the square root of 13 x. So it's almost as if I treat the square root of x function, the derivative is 1 over 2 times the square root of x. If there is something underneath that radical, I take the derivative of that radical and it's there. Ah, this is a very, very, very big deal. Let's think about this one. m prime of x. I'm going to do the square root of x. It's 1 over 2 times the square root of x. So I'm going to say 1 over 2 times the square root of 9x minus 4. 2 times the square root of 13x. But then there's that 13 there. Where does this 13 come from? It's the derivative of what's underneath the radical. So on my numerator, what's the derivative of what's underneath my radical? Well, 9. So m prime of x is 9 over 2 times the square root of 9x minus 4. Whoa. Let's give this a try. n prime of x. So let's think of this as 2 times the square root of 5x squared plus 3x minus 8. Now I'm going to take my numerator. My new numerator is going to be the derivative of what's underneath the radical. 10x plus 3. Boom. Whew, that's a lot there. That's crazy. You're doing great. We're going to do... Um, one more set of rational functions, take a look at those, but just this idea, and it ties in really nicely. You do your derivative of your radical times the derivative of what's underneath that radical. So check out this guy. Three more. Kind of similar. Kind of very similar. All right, so p of x is 1 over x, which is x to the negative 1. So p prime of x is negative 1, x to the negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 1 over x squared. I skipped a big step there. Let's go back. Negative 1 x, negative 1 minus 1, negative 2. I don't like negative exponents. Negative 1 over x squared. There's your function. There's the derivative. So let's treat it the same way, right? I have 1 over 9x minus 4. I have a negative numerator. I square the denominator. So funky tricks, and I can show you a proof of these. Maybe I'll just put the proof online and you can check it out. But it's basically 9x minus 4 to the second power times the derivative of what's here. What's the derivative of 9x minus 4? 9, but then it's negative. And if this is feeling funny, let's rewrite m of x is 9x minus 4 to the negative 1 power. What I'm essentially doing when I take this derivative is the negative 1 comes out front, 9x minus 4, follow the same rules, negative 1 minus 1, times what's inside, the derivative of what's inside. So mathematically, this is going to equal, I've got a negative 1 and a 9, so a negative 9 over 9x minus 4, because I've got negative 1 minus 1 to the negative 2 power. I'm going to put that in the denominator, so I'm going to have a positive exponent. Hmm... Let's give n of x a try. I'm going to rewrite n of x as 5x squared plus 3x minus 8 to the negative 1 power. So n prime of x is going to be negative 1 times 5x squared plus 3x minus 8 to the negative 1 minus 1 times the derivative of what's inside. 2 comes down, 10x plus 3. So flip it up. Negative 1 times 5x squared plus 3x minus 8 to the negative second power times 10x plus 3. Put it all together, get rid of negative exponents. 10x plus 3 times a negative 1 all over 5x squared plus 3x minus 8 squared. Holy cow. A lot to process and think about. Let's keep practicing. You're going to have some examples on your O2Is. Let's just keep working at it. You're doing a great job. Thanks for coming. Take care of yourselves.